The pun multiplayer add-on is designed to allow you to take any of the single player features from the Ops of Character controllers and synchronize it using the pun multiplayer implementation. Before we get started, I do just want to say that this add-on does not contain any game logic, so you'll need to be familiar with pun scripting in order to add that game logic. By game logic, I mean things such as a deathmatch mode or a capture the flag mode. This add-on only contains a synchronization code for any of the features within the character controller. Let's go ahead and get started by first setting up the scene. So I have this single player scene here and I also have the character controller and Photon Pun Unity packages imported. For the character controller, I'm using the first person character controller because there's one extra step required because you'll notice that the character doesn't have any arms and when you're a remote client you'll want to see the arms on all the other remote players. So there's one extra step and I figured it would be good to show it in this video. If you already have a third person character you will not need to perform this step. So let's go ahead and hit play to see what we're working with. And you'll see that we start with the assault rifle and you can obviously shoot the assault rifle and then we have this moving platform that will rotate when it's in the air and the align to ground ability is currently active so the character will rotate with that moving platform I also have a sword that I can use to destroy things such as that crate and then finally there is a runtime pickup and that's the bow and then I can shoot the arrow so that's a good demonstration of a projectile. So let's go ahead and get started and setting up the scene and the first thing that we want to do is go to Tools, Opsiv, Ultimate Character Controller, Add-ons Manager. When the Add-ons Manager open you'll see a pretty familiar setup and the first thing that we want to do is hit Setup Scene. This will add all the singleton components to the pun game object. This singleton component setup wizard is very similar to the Add Managers button and if we click on pun game you'll see these game object or these components added we're not going to change anything right now but we will later on in this video the next thing that we want to do is go ahead and set up the objects in the scene the three objects that we're going to set up are the moving platform this crate and the runtime pickup and let's start with the moving platform by selecting the moving platform game object we'll see that it has the moving platform component I basically just grabbed this from the demo scene, the single player demo scene from the first person character controller demo. And we will drag this game object into the object setup section and then hit setup object. We'll see now that instead of just the moving platform component, we have pun moving platform. And this will allow the moving platform to stay synchronized on all the different instances of the remote players and the clients. So, for example, if the moving platform is at this third waypoint when a new client joins that new client will have the moving platform start at the way the third waypoint instead of starting way down here it'll just keep everything synchronized the next thing that we want to do is set up this crate and we follow a very similar step by just dragging it in and hit setup and the final thing that we want to do is set up this bow and this involves a little bit more work but it's still not that bad so we'll see that the bow it has this item pickup component and we want that to be a pun item pickup so let's go ahead and hit set up object and we'll see that now we have the pun item pickup and then it also added a few more components such as managing the responder or the actually this one doesn't have any health so just the responder in this case it will also synchronize the active state so for example when this pickup is inactive then it will stay inactive on all the different clients so the bow is set up in this one instance, but we need to do a little bit more work and we'll do that by first dragging in this and creating a prefab and then we'll call this prefab bow pickup pun. We're creating this prefab because when you pick up the bow, since it's a runtime pickup, it's going to pick up this prefab right here called first person controller bow. Let's go ahead and duplicate that and then drag it in and then while we're here we'll duplicate arrow and drag it in and we're doing this because when the bow is picked up we don't want it to pick up the single player version of the bow because when the character dies and he drops all the weapons we want it to the character to drop the pun version 
So instead of dropping this bow pickup, we want to drop the bow pickup pun. And then similar to the arrow, the arrow has a projectile component that should be managed by pun. So we're first going to drag the arrow in and hit set up object. And we'll see that we now have a pun projectile instead of just a regular projectile. And for the runtime pickup, we need to replace that arrow with a pun arrow. So let's scroll down to the shootable weapon component and there's the arrow that we now want to replace with the arrow pun. So that is all set up. Actually, we need to update the runtime pickup one more time and have it pick up the pun version of the bow. So all the links are in place now. And actually, let's do that on the actual prefab rather than the prefab instance. So we're good now. Let's go back to the singleton components. And this spawnable prefabs list is a very important list because it manages which objects can be spawned over the network. Let's say that I'm a client and I want to spawn the arrow. The only way that all the other instances are going to know to spawn that arrow is if it's within this spawnable prefabs list. So let's go ahead and drag all the spawnable objects, which are the arrow and the bow pickup. And that's all that we need to do there. If you don't drag this in and it, you later at runtime see that uh, an object actually does need to be spawned, you'll get a nice little error. So uh, it will just kind of remind you to put it in this list. The other thing that we need to do is add the runtime item. And we are going to add the actual item instance or the item prefab instance. And we are doing this because let's say that five minutes ago, my character picked up the bow and a new client joined. The original character is nowhere near the bow, but this new client needs to know that this remote player has the bow and this runtime pickups will just go through and add all the runtime pickups to the character so that they can be spawned with the character or they can be equipped with the character for that remote character. So now that we've done that, we've pretty much set up the scene and the next step is to set up the actual character and in that we'll do that for the next video.